Hi guys, it's me Andrea. I will show you my page for the Pick a Stick Challenge May 2017. And here are the steps and that's what I made. So the first step is add something metallic. You always have a wild card when you don't like a step, you can swap it. So that's the first thing I did. I swapped it into the wild card and that was add gears and that's what I do. I have all or uh, really a lot of dies for this gears and uh, always have some them laying around from project where I didn't use them all. So that's why I did. Um, I'm adhering them here with gel medium all the way up. That's my first step. I cross that out because I've chosen the wild card and take it off. So the next step is add hearts. And I only wanted to have little ones and it's the only little heart I have here in this corner puncher. I punched them already out and I put them on randomly next to the die cuts. Because, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not really a big heart fan actually. So, yeah, very, very small and not very obvious. That's the best thing. But I added hearts. So done. The next step is use a tag and that's a good thing that it says use a tag and not add a tag because I will only use it partially and what I thought about doing is some sort of stairs here but didn't work out for me so that's why I use the whole bit here and still thinking I tear off these edges. I wanted to have it look more distressed and I had more time to think about what to do. I use this uh, embossing folder here that's a wall pattern and I run it through my machine. So I have this wall pattern on that tag and it's already stuck down. So the next step is use the cooking recipe. And that's what I have here. These are books from my grandmother, you know, sort of comp composition books, you call them, I think. She wrote recipes in there and she um, cut them out from, from papers and then glued them in. So I have them all. And what I got out here is a recipe about uh, smoked uh, English uh, smoked haddock soup it is. So... I only use this little bit so that the title is still visible because the fish um, it, it will have, of course, an, a, a reason that I I use a fish recipe. You will see later. So the rest of the tag I add here, here. I wanted to have it balanced, you know. That's why I put it there. No other reason. A bit of ink over the embossed uh, parts there that the wool pattern comes out much more and a bit here around the edges to... Um, yeah, define it even more. So, but before I go on with uh, the next, no, I will do the next step here. It's add random letters. I have this tin with leftover letters, you know, and I, I chuck them in. And now I get some out really randomly. I didn't look. Put them um, on here and uh, had a look in the internet. You have those random letter things where you can put in letters and it will come up with all the words you can build up with it. So, and what I did, I ch chosen this word hanged and um, didn't use all the other ones and I put them here. They won't go in one straight row because it was far too long. So I put them into a cluster, much nicer. So exactly like that and glued them down with gel medium so that's done but now before I go on add a charm it says I will uh, put this um, layer of gesso on top to cover up this black um, yeah cardstock I didn't want to have it black and this is the charm or metal piece you could put on um, this is the fishbone and now you can make out already the connection between the recipe and this charm and later on you will see it of course will make sense at the end sort of yeah okay so it's hanging there on that gear and that step is done and now the next one is tine, uh, tint any medium so 
and apply through a stencil. And what I did is I used this um, airbrush medium and some of this grey paint from um, Amsterdam and I put this um, airbrush medium into it and mix it and use this with the Andy Skinner stencil so that uh, it matches fantastically the gears here and I go lightly over. I didn't want to have it very, very dominant and um, of course I will have it shown through at the end but very lightly. So I'm not covering the whole page. I always like to have some wide areas on pages. So that's done. And now to step eight. Step eight says add a cat image, image drawn, stamped or collage. So yeah, it gave me a bit of a nightmare. Ugh. I already drew drew something on the page, but it's always difficult to draw on gesso and erase it. So, and I tried to to do it out of my mind without a reference, but it ended up being rubbish. So what I do here now, I use tissue paper, got a reference, and more a comic strip like cat. Oh yeah, and I'm much better with that. So, even though a lot of erasing will go on, so but it at the end it looked like ah, a cat yeah people will see um, that's a cat <laughs> okay still a bit of erasing going on and drawing and so I glue it down it's always great to do it with a tissue paper you won't see it afterwards you know it's not really obvious that you glued something down really good when you have a very uneven background and you want to stamp stamp first on a tissue paper because um, you will never get a nice image on an uneven area with a stamp. So now starting to uh, yeah colorize it. I'm not using really colors. I use different grays and uh, it will be a gray cat at the end of the day. So and I use my um, pit pens for that. Yeah, I have the most great choices with my pit pens actually. So and as I told you before, this is the page for the pick a stick challenge of May. I was the guest picker this month, and of course I really wanted to do the page as well. I'm always a bit um, intimidated by by doing stuff like that because it's something. You know, I'm working with the flow. When I start something, I'm, I'm, I'm going where where this page is is leading me. So, and that's always a bit difficult with all these prompts you have to follow, and um, you can't skip it. So you have to do them in order. And of course, you can do stuff in between. That's not the point. But yeah. So, but I did it, and I'm quite pleased with it. So that's the next step, and that says you use your favorite color. That's what I did, turquoise. Okay, I have a lot of favorite colors, but um, yeah, I was only allowed to use one. <laughs> I put it on and I blend it out with a baby rub because I definitely want to have the stencil parts looking through. So that's why I blend it out. That it is a tiny bit thinner, not that opaque. Okay. And uh, I have to go over the cat again, over the lines, because they were, were a bit washed out now. And go in with my big dark grey pit pen to put a bit of shading in, make it a bit more yeah, darker. A dark cat, almost black, yeah. Dark grey. Okay. So what I have to do, of course, is uh, before I do my last step, I have to go around all my little uh, the letters and the die cuts from my gears to make them more visible, of course. So, and if you want to take part, go for it. You know, I was always this, oh, I can't do that, and but it is really fun and. Um, it's only a page come on what could go wrong nothing really and if you do both you know the the ATC as well then you can get a really nice price so that's even better so it would be 
fun if you would take part go over to facebook have a look i will put all the links down into my description box and will tell you everything about it so for a bit of shading i use my dervent ink tense pen here in the dark uh, it's a dark turquoise didn't want to have it black only a bit of hint of a shade and or shadow and activate it here with my water tank brush and uh, I will go around the cat as well and the letters I think yeah I think the letters as well or have been around it already don't know <laughs> forgot I, I I think I have been around with the Durban ink tense pen already yeah only activate it Okay, so as I said, I had a lot of fun and I didn't expect to have fun, but it was really good. Sometimes you have to think a bit around the corner. What we say in German, the expression is thinking around the corner, but it's outside the box, you could say. So this is the last step, splatter ink or paint, and it's a perfect last step, isn't it? But not for me. I'm going on. But that is the last uh, step you have to do. But it doesn't say stop here you can go on and do whatever you like to do and that's what i do i use here my wax paste in copper and go around or over the gears the die cuts and the letters as well several times to make it a bit darker a bit more intense always start i always start with stuff like that very lightly to find out if it's the right thing polish it after a while when it sort of soaked in and it's a bit drier then I polish it that brings out the shine and now you will see the close-up already so that's it I had a lot of fun so and I hope you like it if so please give me a thumbs up I really appreciate that leave a comment if you don't mind have enough time and think about taking part come on have a look in the description box and take part. It's fun. So, guys, that's it. You will see some pictures at the end. And I say, again, thanks a lot for watching. And I hope I will see you soon with my next project. And have a fantastic time. Bye-bye.